Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And this will also be an episode of Pens on the Road, because we're going to visit beautiful Catherine, North Dakota. Let's call it the gateway to the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Byway. Because uh, until this trip, I always thought Catherine was a side trip while on the Scenic Byway. Oh no, it goes right through the Scenic Byway. And this time, because I walked around Catherine, I learned that. So, if it hadn't been for my flat tire that morning, I probably wouldn't have walked around Catherine because I had quite different plans for the day. So, uh, I won't say I'm thankful for the flat tire, but I'm really glad I discovered the Shine River Scenic Byway as it truly is. And, it was kind of interesting to walk around Catherine and then research a little bit more later. So, uh, let's dive into that. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And hey, what do you think of Catherine? Do you like to stop in small towns and just explore? Do you find them full of surprises, or are they oh, yawn-worthy? Let us know down in the comments. So let's take a look at some pens, and then let's take a look at Catherine. Alright, so these are the pens and inks this week. From left to right, I have a Flaro from Romania. I have my uh, Parker Vector. I have my Cross Wanderlust. I have my Cora, which is a Dutch vintage pen with a fuzzy on the end there. I have a Lamy 2000, a Parker Sonnet, a vintage Aurora 88, and finally a Pen BBS 487. So let's see how these write. As always, I'm going to test the writing in this Cognitive Surplus Journal. My first pen was this week's first impression. It is this Flato. Uh, I didn't ever get a model number, but uh, you know, white finial. Z. Um, kind of a funky bent clip. And it vaguely reminds me of Parker Jotter, but also definitely does the you know, communist block thing. So, uh, yeah, the biggest thing I've found in the time since I filmed its first impression is it's got a very sharp step right here between the barrel and the section that I do not appreciate. So, Flato. That's all I know, so we'll go with that. Uh, the ink in it is Parker Quink. So, a little scratchy on the paper, but not bad. Some people might call it feedback. Parker Quink washable blue, which definitely seems to have gotten darker. Uh, I'm guessing there's some evaporation going on, but uh, I will say that this pen is, even though it actually spent two weeks just sitting there in the pen case for a while, I've not had any hard starts or any issues of that sort with this. So uh, on that score, this pen is doing extremely well. And I think with a little bit of nib smoothing, we could solve the feedback thing. Uh, I'm hesitant to do that with a vintage pen, just because they are sort of irreplaceable. But, uh, you know, it's not objectionable. My next pen, which I was thinking compared well to it until I set them side by side, and I'm like, eh, no, not seeing it, is a Parker Vector. This is another pen that sometimes I've found this uh, step up the section to be kind of sharp. I use this pen right now to address envelopes. It has a uh, medium nib in it. And the ink in it is platinum. Carbon black. Which, if you're worried about waterproofness, this is a good one. It's one of those nano inks where uh, it's basically particles of pigment that, after the ink dries, they just sit on the paper and they cannot be re-dissolved. 
and yet they're small enough that it can be safely used in a fountain pen as long as you clean it out properly afterwards. So not, you know, my favorite color of black, but uh, a good ink for its purpose. My next pen <clears throat> is the Cross Wanderlust. I forgot last week what the uh, where we were wandering with this pen. It's uh, Antelope Canyon, which is uh, quickly flooded during flash floods. Another very nice pen. I bought this last spring and uh, took it with me on a wander, actually, and I enjoyed it very much until it ran out of ink. Cross Wanderlust, the ink in it is Iroshizuku. Fuyugaki. Um, the ink level is starting to go down, which is fine. I am, uh, I think we're going to see some big changes in the pens that I have inked here in the next couple of weeks, which is good. You know, I, I don't mind if I have repeats from week to week because this is not meant to be exciting every week. It's meant to be this is what I'm using this week, and sometimes I repeat pens. I repeat pens a lot, actually, and that's part of the point of the show. What do I actually use? Uh, this Cora, a Dutch pen from the 1950s, one thing I have found with it is I tend to uh, post it, and I don't usually post pens, but this is one that's just short enough that uh, it's kind of uncomfortable if I don't post it. So Cora, and the ink in it is Roar and Cleaner, Blue Mare. I think that's what I was told to pronounce it like. I have an Italian foreign exchange student, but uh, he doesn't seem particularly familiar with fountain pens, so, uh, you know, exposing him to my weird hobby I don't think would go very well. Alrighty, so kind of a turquoise ink. I like it. I just have several bottles of different colors of turquoise ink and I want to use one or more of them up. Then I have my Lamy 2000 with the broad nib. This is a fun pen. Uh, I, I kind of enjoy what it does with very shading inks like this one. Uh, this is Noodlers. I don't feel like writing the whole name. Black Swan in English Rose. Plus, I've got a letter to write this week. I kind of want to have some ink left in this pen uh, to, to do one of the pages of that letter. So, uh, yeah. I guess I could refill it, but... Uh, Anyway, I, I enjoy, uh, like I said, the shading inks in this pen. This pen is a, it's a fun one. Someday I'd like to try a Lamy Double Broad. Um, I haven't yet, but I would like to. But as broad as this one is, it's possible I won't like a Double Broad because it might be too broad to be usable. My next pen, Parker Sonnet, which actually may, would be a very good daily writer type of pen. Uh, it's a video I want to do before I run this pen empty. And this is a fine nib. I want to compare a couple of different Daily Raider type pens. Uh, this one would be one, the, uh, the Lamy 2000, and uh, got a couple others. So the ink in this one is a Parker Quink Blue Black. Which... Uh, the blue, whoops, the blue blacks are actually my gateway drug into uh, blue ink because uh, I'd never been a fan of blue ink before and uh, 
Now I definitely have an appreciation for it. Let's uh, actually try and get this on screen. Wouldn't that be swell? Sorry, I'm kind of on the tired side. <laughs> yeah. So this is just a nice shade of blue-black. I enjoy it. And this would be a good ink to be a Daily Writer type of ink. My next pen is a vintage, also a very good Daily Writer type of pen, by the way, except for that fear of losing it. But it's a vintage Aurora 88. Now I think a little evaporation has taken place here because I used this pen for a while, I put it down, I use it again, and uh, we'll put vintage in parentheses here. Anyway, I think some evaporation has taken place. The ink in it is Pelican 4001. Royal Blue. See, that's the problem when you have too many pens inked up, is you do have some evaporation. And, uh, you know, I inked up too many pens in preparation for my visit with the Moto Lisa a while back. And, you know, now we're, uh, I'm still working through some of them. And also trying to rotate in fresh stock, and I've been filming a couple of videos here on the sly. And my last pen for tonight is this Pen BBS 487 with uh, the magnetic filler. I did replace the nib with a broad goulet nib. It definitely made a night and day difference with this pen. Although, why did I put this color in it? I do not know. Whoops. I put in Edelstein Onyx. Which is not a bad ink. It's just, um, I feel like with this nib, this pen could show off some fun inks. So I'm working my way through a whole bunch of black ink first. We'll get there. You know, I'm thinking some Sailor Gentle Epinard might be fun in this pen. I don't know. What do you think? So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. From the first time I ever visited Catherine, I liked it. It's right here along the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Byway, and I used to think that the the byway continued where you go straight there, but I would always cut across to Catherine and then come back to it, but I've since realized that, nope, it's here in Catherine. I'm on it right now. So uh, I'll show you where I discovered that during this walking tour, but I just thought because I couldn't do my regular morning plans, uh, thanks to that flat tire I had, I'm going to t walk around Catherine and a couple other spots and uh, fully tour the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Byway. So I don't know, it probably turned out better or at least different from what I expected and in a good way. So there is a main street in Catherine, but it's basically empty. I mean, they have some buildings. This one was very nicely fixed up. But uh, for the most part, they're empty. And it uh, doesn't look like there's much future there. But it's still fun to see the old historical buildings. And of course, a semi-modern grain elevator. A uh, little historical plaque because, again, Catherine is along the Shine River Valley Scenic Byway and I didn't know that. And it just gives, you know, there's these different spots that give some information. Uh, that should have been a clue where I was, but again, I'm slow. Uh, just another look. I, I kind of appreciate these older cars parked along Main Street and then the uh, Hum, what is it, Humvee? Hummer? I forget what those kind of SUVs are called. And then just a closer look at a couple of these abandoned buildings. There's old stuff inside them. And outside this one. Uh, so we had some old oil cans. Obviously this was set up kind of as a display. I don't know when. But uh, there it is. 
And uh, I am walking around with my gimbal to do all this video, so I don't know if it's uh, improved the quality or not. Maybe I should just do all this on a tripod and not walk around, but anyway, yeah, there's me with my gimbal. Just spying in on these abandoned buildings. And uh, I feel like there was something in that car that I should have looked at. I totally missed it until I saw it in the reflection during the video. So another old older building. And then uh, probably an old bank. I think it's the city hall now. Uh, with a handicapped accessible entrance to it. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, the main street is kind of paved. But none of the other streets in town are. Then I saw this building, which uh, I don't know what it is, but a guy came out of it smoking a cigarette for a while while I was filming. So uh, something must be back there. No, a bar, I think, if I remember right. And then this was cool. You know, you look past this building, we've got Catherine on the side of the butte there. Or probably I should call it a hillside in this part of the state. Yeah. So that's kind of a neat touch with the uh, old threshing machine right there beside it. And then I walked a little bit through the city park. I don't know how many children actually live in Catherine. You know, it's a town of 50 people. So there can't be very many children. But it's nice to give them a place to play. And, uh, you know, that kind of makes me think. What, what draws you to a place like Catherine? Not a lot of jobs there. There's the old uh, city rec center. Uh... Not a lot of jobs there, not not a lot of amenities. I don't know if it's still in use, but I would guess that the community hall contains a basketball court, maybe a couple of rooms for meeting, maybe one large room for a meeting. I don't know. But nice to have something. And just another look at the community hall. I, I would guess the barn-type structure contains a basketball court, and uh, who knows what's in the rest. But... A place where you can get together during uh, cold weather. And then uh, here's looking down a, a residential street and across a little creek which is actually making some sound. And then this house caught my eye. I tried not to be too revealing, but then I saw this sign like, what? Ah yeah, somebody is uh, against COVID precautions. So yay, they're all over. And they just had to put it on display. But anyway, there's firewood. Not a common sight in North Dakota. A lot of firewood, this house. And, you know, in the Cheyenne River Valley, uh, that's probably a feasible heat source. And just the remains of a garden, which were in shadow at the time. And then you may have heard this, so I just felt I should show it. This isn't the Cheyenne River, but it feeds into it. Just a nice stream running through the city. And I'm wondering if this is related to the dam that's built around it. I was just thinking when I did my Devil's Bathtub hike, which I haven't uploaded yet, I narrated a lot. And there was so much running water, you couldn't hear me. So uh, I'm not sure what to do with the audio with that one. But I'm hoping I got some cool running water from behind me here. There were some machines working. I'm not sure what they were. I, I don't know if they was going to the sewer or underground lines of some kind, but... You heard that a lot as I was walking around. Uh, but again, a little bit more residential area. Just kind of showing you where people of Catherine live. Because 50 people do so. A uh, nice house that's uh, enough sheltered behind the trees. I felt safe showing it. Uh, just a nice bright colored house. And then I ran into this Lutheran church. Oh, and a dog. Who had a lot to say the whole time I was in that area. Old churches are interesting. Um, just kind of neat to see what they did with them and uh, what what a church represented and so on. And then just another look at the grain elevator. Uh, just uh, you know, every almost every town in North Dakota had one at one point. And then just a closer look. Yeah, the, apparently the church was built in 1914, which is interesting because I just recently toured a church built in 1914. And then a closer look at the stained glass window, which uh, I'll bet looks kind of interesting on the inside. Cool from the inside but that's what you get. And then we're just, I'm sorry, but we're just going to look at the offending animals. I just, 
I would hate to be that guy that owns the loud, annoying, barky dog that doesn't shut up and keeps everybody awake and bothers everybody. Um, yeah, just shut up, dog. <laughs> I know he's being doggy and his dog, doggy instincts and so on, but annoying. I kind of like this house right here. It's small. Two stories. A little bit of a fixer-upper. Next door to it is the same thing, only fixed up, but I'll respect their privacy. And what a contrast. This dog has up a sign that says welcome, and here's the dog trotting out to say welcome, and it's like, why are the neighbors barking? Gosh, they're loud. Just shut up, dogs. Man, you're giving us a bad name. I'll have to check. I think the highway is the actual scenic byway. Uh, but I'll have to look when I look on my cell phone, I guess. <laughs> nice thing about having it. Because maybe... I know part of the route is supposed to be gravel, so maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years. And just for fun. And up there is what I believe was their school at one time. So we'll take a closer look. Just a quick look back at Catherine as I walk toward the school. And yeah, that sign there says you're on the scenic byway. So yeah, I've been doing it wrong all these years. But uh, anyway, I'm glad I did this walk because I learned a lot. the trouble with this camera is it does compress everything because of its short focal length but we're looking at what I think is the old school I think this hillside would have been pretty glorious maybe a week or two ago back when it was covered with leaves but most of them are off now there's enough left that you can kind of imagine what it was on this unpaved road. We've got a little pedestrian bridge, which is a nice touch. And, I don't know, I'm thinking some kind of animal must have made that. What do you think? And of course, we're real close to Catherine still. I have to kick up my heels for a couple hours tomorrow in Valley City while I get my tires replaced. That was fun. So maybe I'll take you around the university while I'm waiting. This is, I don't know if this was ever the school, but a lot of towns built a new school kind of as a last ditch effort to save themselves. And then, uh, you know, they're left with these nice new buildings and nobody in them. It looks like there are people here. Uh, so I don't know if this was the school or not. It could also have been built by the university for some purpose. But I feel like it's a school. You know, classrooms around the outside, uh, gym slash cafeteria in the middle. Some schools are built that way. Just another view of Catherine. Okay, here comes the excitement of a gravel truck. So I walked past him on the wrong side of the road and got a face full of dust. That was fun and stupid of me. And just a, another look down the residential street. There aren't that many of them. And no trucks or farm equipment allowed on this street. I walked up it. The Camry may go down it, but I think I'm legal. And then we got people working. And just on my way back to the car, notice some more cool old stuff. Put away my gimbal, and then I notice what I'm parked by. So we'll do a little shaky cam. So you got a horsey? Let's 
somebody must be taking care of it a little bit. So that was Catherine, North Dakota. And yes, I uh, discovered the correct route to go on the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Byway, and this is it. Uh, where I had walked earlier and noticed the sign. Uh, Catherine is a cool little town of, a, again, about a 50 people. And, you know, I, again, I kind of wonder what draws people to a town like that. I suppose it's quiet. Uh, it is within driving distance of much larger valley city. So, you know, you're not totally shut off. I mean, if the town I live in was that size and I had to drive as far as I have to to civilization, yeah, that'd be awful. But, because uh, there's no amenities in Catherine, except maybe the peace and quiet. Although there was constant droning of machines while I was there, so, eh, how quiet. And, uh... You know, there's uh, the bar to get together in that community hall, but uh, just not a lot. I guess the church. So, but again, something draws people to towns like this. I, uh, you know, will will it eventually dry up and blow away in the prairie winds, or will people continue to move there? Maybe it's low real estate prices. Who knows what will keep people in Catherine, or like I said, maybe it'll dry up. Uh, sometimes these towns live on kind of as a legacy of their better days as people die off and uh, nobody new comes in. I know towns like that. They're just drying up and, uh, you know, so I don't know what's in Catherine's future, but I just thought it was interesting and a little piece of America that people don't see. And yeah, this is primarily a fountain pen channel, but one of my goals has been uh, to share the lesser visited parts of the United States, mainly the area where I live. And uh, if I ever get home, I'll have to protect identifying information. But, uh, you know, a little bit of the area where I grew up, too, would be interesting. So, so thank you for coming along for the ride. And, uh, yeah, my Shine River Valley Scenic Byway includes this stop, so we'll close this off here. So if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, are there any cool old towns where you live? You know, let us know if it's safe to do so in the comments down below. Well, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.